Hello, my name is Andrew Gobo, and I am a software test engineer with the Fieldcom Group. Today, I'm going to be running you through how to install the Reference Runtime IDE version 1.4.2. Now, in order to download, you will be shared a file through ShareFile. You should see something like this. Uh, ignore the older versions. I have those because I am in test. You should only see these four. 1.4.2, the IDE itself, the IDE documents, Eclipse and Java, and the package IDE samples. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to select these four and hit download. After a little pre-processing, it will allow you to save uh, these files in one big zip to your computer. I've already done that, and in the interest of time, I've gone ahead and extracted it, which you just do that by right click and you hit extract all. So the first thing you're gonna do is open up the documents folder. Next, you're going to open up this user guide right here. This is the entire FDI package IDE user guide, but we're only going to be focusing on a small section of it. So we're going to scroll down to page 11, Section 2, which concerns installation. First, we need to install the base components. The first component we need to install is the JDK, or Java Development Kit. We do that by going out of the Documents folder, going into Eclipse and Java here, I'm going to hit Next, agree to the terms of the license agreement. You'll see here there are several different custom options, and finally, install. If you get a user account control, hit yes. Now, the rest of these concern uh, upgrading and uninstallation of Java, but we don't need that. So now we move on to the Eclipse section. So in order to do that, first thing we're gonna do for ease of use is open another file explorer. I'm going to go to this PC, the C drive, and in the C drive itself, we're going to create a new folder and call it Eclipse. I suggest putting a capital E and you'll see why. So we'll navigate out of the Java folder and into the Eclipse folder. Next, we're going to select the zip file, hit extract all, but don't hit extract just yet. We're going to hit browse, and then we're going to go find that Eclipse folder we just made. And we're going to extract the contents of the Eclipse document there. Again, this is all covered in the document. This video is just to help you follow along more easily. Now that that is finished installing, don't close the second file explorer just yet. As told in the document, once you have finished extracting, you should start Eclipse by double-clicking the exe file. When this starts, it'll ask you where you want your workplace, um, standard Eclipse procedure, and you can also choose to use the default until not to ask you again. Uh, for now, we're just going to leave it like this. Now that Eclipse has opened up normally, you can just go ahead and close it. For now you can minimize the file explorer. Next, we need to install the FDI package IDE prerequisites. How we do that? We go back to the file, IDE, and we run the prerequisites.exe file. Select install, allow, now you'll be prompted to the installation seal for the OPC UA local discovery server, accept the terms and install. And you should finish, 
and you should get the following screen as confirmation that you have completed all the installation of the prerequisites. Go ahead and hit close, and it's time to install the IDE itself. So how we do that? First, we need to extract the files. You're going to go into the folder. You're going to double click the .msi file. Hit next. Everything is already pre-selected, so hit next. You can agree to the license based on your respective license conditions. I'm going to choose the FCG one. Now, these are the sandbox settings. They are explained in further detail on page 22 and 23 of the user guide. Um, basically, it is concerned with running UIPs on a secondary user account for limited rights or security purposes. We're not going to focus on that now. That is something you need to decide within your organization and with your own IT team. So for now, I'm just going to skip configuration. And so the UIPs will run onto the current user account. It will default to your program 86 files, but it will you will see it says the Eclipse installation cannot be found. So what we need to do is browse and select the lowercase Eclipse folder that we moved. As you can see, the warning disappears and we are good to go. Now hit install. Now that the installation of the FDI has IDE has finished, I want to take you on a brief aside. In order to run everything, you will also need to install the appropriate communication servers. That will not be covered in this video, and please contact us if you have any questions. Back to the FDI IDE, you'll see that after completion of the install, you have it will automatically start the license manager, uh, open the IDE to start working with device packages, and open the quick start document. So just hit finish. In order to fully utilize the reference runtime environment and the reference runtime IDE, you would need a valid Fieldcom group license. In order to do that, use the license manager. You'll see here. Hit add license. And for me, I already have a license. It's a .lfx. Make sure you do not open this license. Editing it in any way will, way will break it. So I'm just going to double click there. It turns from red to green and lets me know that my license is good. So I can close the license manager. From here, I can import packages, import communication packages, and the like. Now, before we're done, there is one last thing we need to do. And in, on page 27, step 10, we have created an FDI perspective that must be activated in order to use Eclipse as the FDI package IDE. Go to Windows and recently added the FDI package IDE. And this will open Eclipse again. Make sure you select your workspace. Now, as noted in the document, you're going to go to Window, Open Perspective, Other. Go ahead and close this welcome. And as you can see here, the Java perspective is the default. And you'll see FDI right there. So click that, and now you can toggle between the two. But with this highlighted, you now have the FDI perspective activated. So with that done, you can now exit Eclipse, and you have successfully installed FDI, uh, the IDE, and the reference runtime version 1.4.2. Thank you for choosing the Fieldcom group, and as always, reach out to us if you have any questions.